It's all systems go for Professor West Randolph, director of the National Scientific Foundation of Science. He plans to put the first unmanned probe on the moon. Meanwhile, his lovely assistant, Professor Sue Tesla, daughter of famed scientist Nikola Tesla, makes final calculations before the launch. Look out, boys. She's got beauty and brains. The seconds count down as the professor and his associates give the final signal for launch. And there she goes. Next stop, the moon. It's only a matter of time before man will be next. Sorry, comrades, America got there first. Next on the agenda, well, we've had some complaints, mainly about the behavior of the Germans outside the facility. Hans, Otto, knock off the German crap when you're out in public. What did we do? Yeah, we didn't do anything to attract attention. Oh, really? First, two strange gentlemen got drunk at the Stein Club and started singing German patriotic songs. Second, and this is my favorite, Two drunk white males were seen by multiple individuals at the town square, seat hiling the American flag. Oh, right. Yeah, we just got a little carried away. Well, stuff like that's gonna get you carried right back to the fatherland. Do you want that? No! Right, so watch it from now on. It'll look bad for the foundation if it gets out that we're using Nazi rocket scientists. Reformed ex-Nazis. Whatever, just try to stay under the radar. And let me know the next time you think there's a rocket ready for launch. Okay, next. Professor Tesla has observed a strange phenomenon in Galaxy M31. Tessie, show us what you got. Maybe later, but first, here's a slide of the constellation M31 located in the universe of Andromeda 2.5 million light years away. This is six months ago. Notice how everything looks as it should? Get to the point, Tessie. Here it is four months ago. Notice the difference? What do you think it is, Professor Randolph? Yes, Professor Randy, what is it? A solar storm, perhaps? Meteor particles? That's a possibility. Now look at M31. Three months ago. What happened to the particles? S is Clark. Exactly. M31 is back to normal. Now, one month ago. Did you confirm this image, Tessie? Yes, absolutely, positively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I mean it. There are two new identical planets. Twins, what happened? It's hard to say. However, check this slide. That was two weeks ago. The cloud? Yes, the solar storm or cloud. Unfortunately, it looks like it's headed this way. Do you know exactly where it is going, Tessie? Not yet. We're still calculating its directions. It may take several more days. Nonsense! 
Not when this facility has the latest high-speed computer on the East Coast. Gentlemen, let's move this meeting to the computer building and the mighty Colossus. Mighty Colossus? Isn't that what your ex-girlfriend used to call you? Right now, I think that it's best that we concentrate on our efforts for science. After Washington, this must be a big letdown. After all, this is pretty much a backwater office. Originally, I felt like I was being punished for arresting those congressmen last year. But damn it, I stand by my decision. They were communist infiltrators. My god, I saw them drinking vodka. Russian vodka. It's too bad you couldn't provide some hard evidence to back up those arrests. Now I see it's all J. Edgar's big plan for me. When I met Mr. Hoover 10 years ago at the annual Washington Fancy Dress Masquerade. Wait, you met Mr. Hoover? He said, Edward, I see big plans for you in the Bureau. You've got a big future. Play your cards right and you will go far. By the way, he makes a fantastic Marie Antoinette. I bet he does. Anyway, the way I see it, this area must be a hot spot for communist agents. Mr. Hoover sent the best man for the job. I am proud to serve with you, sir. Naturally, I expect to be back on my way to Washington soon after I clean up this territory. Once I'm there, I'm gonna need an assistant. You can count on me. Right, let's get going. Nothing makes me angrier and these commie low lowlifes. How angry, sir? So angry, I'm seeing red. Gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Colossus, the most advanced electronic computer on the East Coast. 125,000 vacuum tubes working in perfect harmony to create the perfect world. Yes, it's only a matter of time before these electronic brains solve all of the world's problems. It's amazing. It all fits in one room. The local university was supposed to get it, but we procured it right under their noses. How did you manage that, Dr. Randy? Remember that secretary from the Federal Office of Science? <gasps> you didn't. Let's just say that we're engaged to be engaged. So, are you still free Saturday night? Oh, definitely. And how much is that gonna cost me? Professor Randolph, you don't have security clearance to be in here, and the Colossus is very sensitive to temperature change. Look, Jimmy, we need you to have the Colossus run these calculations. It's very important. The fate of mankind and my tenure may depend on it. Sorry, sir. The Colossus can't work on anything without approval from the board of directors. I can't do anything without written instructions. Hello, Jimmy. Thank you for the flowers. They were lovely. Dr. Tesla, you're with these guys. And the flowers. I never did get a chance to thank you for them. OK, Professor. Don't tell anyone about this. It'll take the Colossus a couple hours to sort these out. Right. We'll be at the rocket lab. Bring the results over there. Yes, sir. See you later, Jimmy. You shouldn't tease the boy, Tessie. You'll scar him for life. That's the plan, Randy. I'm not sure what the problem is. It's like it's not getting enough fuel. Did we hook up the fuel line?
Professor Randolph, Professor Randolph, I have the results from the classes. Hmm. Gentlemen, it appears that whatever this cloud is, it is headed towards Earth. for you. Uh, not now! What does this mean? I'm not sure, but I don't think it can be good. I'm sorry, this is a secured zone. You'll have to leave. Excuse me, I am not from your world. I am unfamiliar with your ways. I come from that Star. You may call me Star Girl. Well, Star Girl, what brings you to our planet? And who designed your outfit? Liberace? I have come to Earth with the cosmic brain. He has sent me to gather you. He must speak with you immediately. You and your planet are in danger. What kind of danger? Grave danger. Well, that is the best kind. But we're kind of busy right now. This is not a request. You must come with me immediately. Let's go, Dr. Randy. We need to find out what this is all about. Why does she speak in English? Sometimes it's best not to sing so much. This is the Cosmic Brain. He is your friend. So that you may understand me, Stargirl has connected a speaker system to my brainwave center. Your puny human brains are not capable of comprehending my brainwave signals. Who are you? What do you want? Careful, Dr. Randy. Your planet is in great danger. My sensors intercepted your Colossus computer's calculations. And I understand that you may have some knowledge of what I'm talking about. What do you mean? The killer sperm from deep space. Killer sperm? The solar storm, Dr. Randy. Yes, they are headed for your planet. Killer sperm? What are the killer sperm? Every 100 billion years, the killer sperm travel the universe, populating the galaxies with new planets as they see fit. Your planet is a giant egg waiting to be fertilized. If they reach your planet, it will be fertilized, and mitosis, or the process of cell division, will take place. This planet will split into identical twins. Life as you know it in this world will no longer exist. You mean we're sitting on top of a giant egg, waiting to be fertilized? Brilliant. I am glad that your meager human brain is able to comprehend the situation. What can we do? I have a plan to build a disintegrator that will stop the killer sperm before they reach the planet's surface. Maybe we could spread a giant sheet of rubber across the entire Earth's surface. Yeah, a galactic prophylactic. Ooh, shut up! You have the technology? Stargirl will assist you with everything you need to know about the design and construction. She can read my brainwaves and follow my instructions. The materials you need are available on this planet. 
I suppose we should get started. Yes, time is short. Stargirl will keep me informed of your progress. I will continue to track the killer's burn. Tessie, you and Stargirl work on the disintegrator in the lab. Sure thing, Dr. Randy. After all, you are the brilliant scientist. You two keep working on the rocket engine. We may need to launch a rocket before this is all over. Yeah, well, yeah, my fair. What? Uh, um, we um, mean, yes. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Try to control the German. You don't want any G-men snooping around. <laughs> The Earthlings are cooperating and do not suspect a thing. Once the killer sperm have been destroyed, then we will be in a position to take control. Yes, our girl is under my control. She will do as I say. She will not be in trouble. I will report back once we have the Earth under our control. This is about the location of the reported flying saucer. Do you think the Russians are behind this? I'm not sure, but it smells like a commie takeover. What's that over there? <laughs> Scientists working on some harebrained scheme. Do you think we better go ask them if they saw anything? <laughs> Scientist, between the bifocals and the beakers, I'm sure they didn't see a thing. It's like old times, eh, Hans? Yeah, working on the V2. Von Braun coming around, buying the schnapps. Toasting our success, blowing up East London. Yeah, good times. Mm. Heinz, Fly, Zufa. Hold it, FBI. What are you two guys up to? Nothing, we are just working on the rocket engine. Keep your gun on him, Eddie. They look like commies to me. Nine, nine, we are exchange scientists from Canada. <laughs> Canada, that explains a lot. What's going on here? These gentlemen are doing important research. Sorry, Professor, we'll let you get back to work. Sorry for the interruption. Looks like we're ready for a test. The cosmic brain reports two hours until fertilization. Let's fire this baby up. Here goes nothing. That's it. We're dead. Sorry, that was a natural reaction. And so was that. OK, uh, plan B. Is the rocket ready for launch? Yavo, yeah, my professor. Well, the plan is to explode the rocket just outside the Earth's atmosphere to create a protective shield that will block the killer sperm as they approach Earth. That sounds very similar to our galactic prophylactic. Yeah, he's always stealing our ideas. What's with Professor Tesla? These big rockets always get her excited. <laughs> if she likes big rockets, what's she doing with Randolph? Well, it's not the size of the rocket, it's the power of the thruster. Uh -huh.
Rockets away. Rocket one has cleared the tower. All systems are go. Come on, baby. Looking good, Dr. Randy. Rocket one continues to climb at 10,000 feet. There appears to be an engine malfunction. Rocket one is now dropping in altitude. Hans, Otto, when can we have another rocket ready? When can we have another rocket ready? We have another rocket? About a week. Dr. Randy, what do we do now? Looks like we're dead. What kind of dead? Like, like house falling on your sister dead? We could connect to the spaceship's power system. Yes, let's run a power cord over to the spaceship. Tessie, you get the disintegrator ready. Hans, Otto, you clean up this mess. Stargirl, come with me. Something's not right with those scientists. Those Canadians were a bit odd. Not them. That woman. She was wearing a silver spacesuit. That's to be expected when you meet up with these picnic types. I'm talking about the woman scientist. Have you ever heard of a woman scientist? No, I haven't. I wonder what her husband thinks about that. I doubt she has one. Only a commie would let his wife work. A good American woman stays at home where she belongs. This smells like some Pinko Kami plot. You're right. We better stick around and keep an eye on it. Gentlemen, this is Earth's last hope. The plan is to spread a broad spectrum disintegrate array over the Earth's atmosphere, shielding the planet from the invasion of the killer sperm. Stargirl, how's the power situation? The cosmic brain reports you have more than enough power for your needs. Enough power to call a single girl the morning after? There's only one problem. It will be a disaster if even one killer sperm gets through to the Earth's crust. <gasps> it's the Big Bang Theory all over again. The cosmic brain reports that the killer sperm are approaching the Earth's atmosphere. Right. Let's fire this baby up. Yes, That's the last time I get hooked. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy. The cosmic brain commands you to come to my ship. Yes, master. Thirty seconds, Professor Randolph. I am going to take over your planet as soon as the killer sperm are destroyed. Professor Randolph is the only human that stands in the way. You, Jimmy, must kill him. Your reward will be Professor Tesla. Yes, Master. Kill Randolph. Win Tesla. Win Tesla. Win Tesla. 45 degrees at 15 degrees northwest. Right. Here goes. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing to do but wait. Kill Professor Randolph. Win Tesla. Win Tesla. Kill Randolph. Are those blue flame fireballs? Yes, they're giant blue balls coming in fast. Randy, you've done it! 
No, it wasn't me. As we of science all know, the power of nature and its laws can never be underestimated. More speeches. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, let, let's just take our chances with the FBI and get out of here before we go totally insane. When free-thinking men bend together for the good of all, nothing can stop them. Kill Randall. When Tesla. Poor Jimmy, he was such a sweet boy. A sweet boy, eh? Yes, but I'm looking for a man. Congratulations, Star Girl. You have defeated the killer star. The Earthlings did most of the work. I was mainly an observer. Nonsense, Star Girl. They lack the intellect to perform much more than the most menial tasks. They will make great pets. Now that the killer sperm are dead, we are the supreme beings on this planet. We will rule this planet and the Earthlings will be our slaves. You are wrong. The Earthlings have taught me a great deal about teamwork and about being human. I will not allow. Stargirl, you are under my control and you will do what I say. Where's Stargirl? I believe she went to the spacecraft to retrieve the power cord. Maybe you should button your blouse. Why is that? Stop, Stop Stargirl, or I'll have, have to destroy you. you. Do, Do as, as I, I say. say. Do, Do as, as I, I say. say. Stop. Stop. Stargirl. You think? I doubt anyone could have survived that explosion. What's going on here? Sorry, Professor. These two Germans are wanted by the U.S. government. They're off to Rocket City. Huntsville, Alabama. The Redstone Arsenal. Don't worry, Professor. We're going back to our old friend, Vanner Von Braun. It will be like old times. And your Reich has agreed to excuse our war crimes. We are going to put a man on the moon. Gotta beat the Russians. Make me proud, boys. What shall we do? Now that the world is safe for democracy and the American way. Maybe we could focus on some new research. I like your thinking. The scientific method. <laughs>